Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Nalanoic and today I will be talking about Drop Wizard. First of all, thank you everyone for coming. And I would like to briefly introduce myself. Previously I worked in Russia, I had a couple of jobs. I taught physics at a uh, big university in South Russia and also I worked as a remote Java developer. I uh, used uh, a full profile application server such as Glassfish or Apache Geronima to build uh, enterprise application. I uh, built uh, both backend and front end using frameworks such as uh, Prime Faces and ZCOS. And the question to everyone, does anybody use Drop Wizard in production? And uh, anybody tried Drop Wizard? I tried it. Okay, and uh, what versions you used? It was about a year ago, so... Oh, uh, probably it was uh, 0.8 or something like that. And now let's go to our presentation and talk about Drop Wizard. And uh, uh, the Drop Wizard site defines Drop Wizard as <coughs> a bunch of frameworks. Uh, it, actually, they are uh, frameworks uh, that are part of a full profile application server such as Glassfish or others. And uh, the, those uh, frameworks are glued together and enable one to build REST APIs. And the result, the application is packed as a fat jar. In a nutshell, uh, fat jar is a solution to a it works on my computer problem when uh, we don't rely on uh, everything that is on our class path because there could be version conflicts and everything necessary for drop wizard to work is packed in a single jar files, file. And uh, why uh, drop wizard is valuable? Uh, first of all, Drop Wizard team has conducted some research and selected the best of the breed frameworks. And it, uh, it's a huge time saver because uh, the task of research can engulf a developer and totally paralyze her work. Also, the parts are glued together and they are tested. And those who try to build something like Drop Wizard or uh, try to mm, work on an application server, they can attest that it's a lot of work. And in addition, Drop Wizard offers some ad additional unique or partly unique to Drop Wizard code. And uh, an example is Drop Wizard Metrics. And this is a library which allows one to monitor an application in production. However, metrics was a huge benefit to Drop Wizard at the early stages of its development. And now uh, you can use metrics with Spring Boot, Vertex, and so on and so forth. But uh, that's not uh, all code uh, that Drop Wizard offers you. And um, there is some code to write test, uh, code to streamline uh, database access code development, and uh, some code to speed up to develop resource methods, methods which uh, process HTTP requests. And I hope that I've uh, drummed up your interest. And now we can uh, talk a little bit why you can choose Drop Wizard for your work. And uh, I have a little question to everyone, to bring everyone to the same page. Should I talk a little bit what uh, REST APIs or REST services are, or it's a common knowledge? Common, common knowledge, that's okay, thank you. And uh, microservices uh, are very popular now, and a lot of c companies are refactoring their monolith application applications into microservices. And it is necessary to stay up to speed with the current trends. And the question which arises, is it necessary to learn something radically new to start building Drop Wizard, uh, to start building Java microservices? And the brief answer is no. You can rely uh, on your knowledge. And uh, as Drop Wizard includes uh, frameworks that are part of application server, you can Mm, pick up it very fast. Uh, several years ago, uh, th there were a lot of uh, far fewer options and you had to 
choose between Drop Wizard and Spring Boot. If you had uh, a full profile application server, it was an option to go with a Drop Wizard. And if you had a Spring background, uh, you could opt for Spring Boot. Uh, however, currently there are more rivals to Drop Wizard, which uh, rely on uh, Java EE technologies to build microservices. And examples include Wildfly Swarm, Payara Micro and others. I try to keep the list of uh, Java microservices frameworks in Java microservices uh, subreddit. I'll uh, upload uh, the uh, link later to the meetup. Uh, but uh, Drop Wizard have mm, uh, advantages, uh, and they are that it's production ready, it has uh, very good documentation, and uh, the members of the team are, are answering the question on a Google group. And now it's high time to introduce Drop Wizard. The first hyperlink, Drop Wizard IO, it's the site of Drop Wizard where you can find current documentation and Java docs and also links to d documentation of the previous version. Uh, the second comes uh, the uh, link to the GitHub repo of the project. And the third link is the link to the group where you can ask for help. They prefer to answer question on uh, the group rather than on Stack Overflow. Also, there is a Drop Wizard su subreddit which uh, is in no way associated with a team and I and other Reddit uh, aficionados, they, uh, or la la lovers, they, th we try to keep uh, uh, links to some interesting uh, data tutorials about Drop Wizard and uh, a fun thing that I found and posted on Reddit is an uh, an official initializer. It's a project like Spring Boot. It'll, it will take a moment. Uh, it's project like Spring Boot initializer where you can select some check boxes and after that you can uh, download a, a, a zip of a seed drop wizard project. And we'll talk about other options a little bit later. I'm sorry for the delay. And uh, uh, also uh, I created a couple of drop wizard project based on the latest ver versions 1.0.2 uh, and there is a project for previous version and both projects are REST APIs to store bookmarks. Also the last line is a simple project that I used for tutorials. I've published on my blog several drop wizard tutorials and uh, uh, you can find some mm, information there in addition to today's presentation because we don't have a lot of time to talk about all the aspects of Drop Wizard. And uh, in the readme of the last projects, you can find all the links to the tutorials. And uh, finally, uh, let's jump a little bit into the future and imagine that we uh, we have already built an application. Uh, this part will be based on my example application and uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, how to create a project later and now we'll talk about what you can do with a drop wizard application. Uh, to uh, build an application we use maven package command and it produces uh, the so-called fat jar in the target a subfolder of our package and drop wizard requires a configuration file it's at the end config.yaml where one can provide all the necessary data uh, to connect uh, drop wizard to the database here is an example of configuration uh, which uh, provides drop wizard with a, a database connection string and the, the nice thing with passing uh, uh, the text file as a command line argument is that you can have uh, several configuration files, one for development, one for production. And for example, for testing, I use uh, a configuration file which instructs Drop Wizard to connect uh, to a memory H2 database. And now uh, 
drop wizard has a notion of drop wizard command so you can pass uh, a some keyword, some word to uh, the, your executable jar file. And uh, drop wizard has some inbuilt commands about which we'll talk now. And also you can create your own uh, commands for mm, drop wizard. Uh, and now let's do some typing. The first command is check and it has to do something with checking the configuration. Here I have uh, a uh, sample uh, configuration. Oh, sorry. That's a key. <laughs> okay, simple configuration file which contains two uh, parameters, login and password, and we'll use them later for authentication purposes. And if uh, now I run uh, this uh, drop wizard with uh, this command, It will take a moment, check, and uh, config.yaml. Uh, we see that it produces a key. And if, for example, I'll try to spoil something intentionally, and I comment out my login, and I try to retype my uh, check command, and you'll see that uh, it produces a message uh, that uh, you have to provide the login uh, parameter in your configuration file. And uh, after that, uh, another uh, uh, part, another branch of commands are uh, connected with working with databases. And uh, drop wizard includes uh, by default uh, Liquibase migrations framework. It's in build. And in production, you can use uh, drop wizard fed jar to execute database. Uh, of migrations and other commands and uh, I'll switch to another window and for example I'll try uh, the status command oh. db status and uh, also I should provide uh, the configuration file and Sorry, uh, a typo, status, sorry, I'm bad at typing in front of people. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> it tells me at uh, the bottom that uh, there are two chain sets that uh, were not applied to my production database. And I can try to work uh, more with a database and uh, there is a dangerous drop all command which uh, it is not advised to use in production and uh, uh, even there is a special flag uh, uh, for this and uh, the flag is confirm del delete delete everything thank you oh i ch confirm every confirm Thank you. Confirm, delete everything. Let's try. It's it's the command only for demonstration purposes. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, if I check uh, the status, uh, the thing tells me that there are seven change sets that have not been applied to my database and. Uh, uh, for example, if you created a, a new application and you created a database for it, you can populate it using a drop wizard um, executable and the command is migrate. And also Liquibase allows you to create name change sets. So by providing a name, you can apply only some change set. And uh, for example, I use a change set for testing purposes and uh, I apply it and uh, you create uh, a database in a production environment and it tells a lot and if I try to check uh, the status of uh, the database it tells me that uh, it had reverted me to the initial state and uh, uh, 
the, the next uh, part will be to run the application and please uh, take note that there is a server command to do so and let's try to start it uh, by the way to stop the application one can safely press control and C don't forget configuration <clears throat> and the application has started and there are various uh, ways uh, in which you can check that it's up and running and there is an administrative port uh, using which you can connect uh, to your application and uh, by default it is 8081 and uh, for example you would like to you have a lot of services and you have ha you should be able to check whether they are up and running and you can uh, access uh, ping path and if it returns pong to you uh, that, that means that it's up and running but uh, you know uh, that it uh, it is up and running it is not it doesn't mean that it works and um, <laughs> As I've previously mentioned, uh, Drop Wizard uh, includes a nice metrics library, and that library uh, includes the so-called health checks. And the single default health check that Drop Wizard provides you is deadlocks, and it relies on JVM to test whether you have deadlocks. But if you connect uh, Hibernate, uh, Drop Wizard adds an additional. Uh, uh, health check uh, which uh, pings uh, the database and uh, uh, watches that it's also up and running and uh, I would like to torture a little bit my application here I have uh, a, uh, my SQL server service and I'll try to stop the server and after that F5 and you see that it tells me that it's unable to connect to the database and uh, in fact you can create your own health checks for example if your RPI uh, connects to some other external service you can uh, periodically ping it using health checks and I think I have to start uh, the server the database server for demonstration purposes and you can create uh, those uh, health checks on your own and uh, finally, uh, here's a command uh, which uh, uses curl to access uh, my application. And I promise you that if I execute it, it will return a JSON uh, list of my bookmarks. Uh, but uh, shortly, it uses minus k key, key uh, to uh, instruct uh, curl to ignore uh, non-signed, self-signed certificates. And uh, it provides uh, user uh, minus U key, uh, username is and password because uh, the IPI is password protected and uh, HTTPS is switched on. And uh, to tell you about what is possible with drop result, I, I'll briefly describe what uh, the project can do. We packaged the result as a fed jar. We can expose REST APIs and um, the content type could be XML, text, JSON, and uh, HTML. And you can use a MySQL or other relational database management system uh, to back your, as the backend of your application. I used Hibernate to talk to database, but GDBI is more lightweight uh, database access framework. It's also included into Drop Wizard. And uh, uh, Drop Wizard. Uh, enforces wide usage of uh, Hibernate validator and also uh, the, the application has a lot of tests and uh, uh, we'll talk a, a little bit later about what Drop Wizard offers in testing and uh, how to create a Drop Wizard project and in addition to non-official initializer you can delegate creation of a Drop Wizard project to Maven archetypes because uh, Java projects always have uh, a lot of boilerplate plate 
Court and uh, it's uh, a good thing to delegate uh, create and folder structure etc to uh, to maven and uh, there are about six uh, drop wizard archetypes but there is single uh, official which is part of drop wizard since version 0 eight and it's called Java simple and the latest version of drop wizard is 1.0.2 and it was released at the end of September. And the thing to watch with this particular archetype, you should provide uh, the name parameter to the archetype, and it uses this name uh, in the names of the files it generates. And I think that everyone has seen how uh, archetypes work, and to save some time, here is what, what's produced. Uh, it created all the necessary folders and two files application and configuration uh, the names of which contain the name parameter and uh, the application file it actually contains the main method of our application and the configuration file contains all the data that we provide in config.yaml file or other configuration file and here's a recommended folder structure for example, uh, you uh, place your domain entities in the core folder, the core to work with database in db folder and uh, resource classes to resource folder. And uh, let's go on. And uh, uh, as everybody knows what's a REST API, uh, who actually works with a full profile application server? Some people, so uh, th those who work with a full profile application server will readily recognize the annotation and the annotations. And the first annotation path is used to instruct Drop Wizard what uh, path uh, uh, URL uh, to serve with uh, the methods of this class. For example, if we uh, check the localhost.port slash hello we have access to all these methods and the path annotation uh, can be used uh, on methods to add to annotation on the class. The get annotation uh, tells drop wizard that uh, this method serves uh, HTTP get me methods and finally uh, produces annotation. Uh, it says what content type to serve. You can have methods which serve different content type, for example, JSON. So wh when you're trying to access your server, you should instruct it uh, using header what content type to serve. And uh, after that, we should go uh, to the previously generated file which ends in application. And there is a special uh, run method where we can uh, register this resource. So we instruct drop wizard to use uh, this resource class or otherwise it will know nothing about it. And uh, the important uh, thing to watch is that configuration is passed to the run methods so we can have access uh, to the configuration properties in our run method and to pass it to the classes that we register here. And uh, we can build this application and uh, uh, start it. And uh, after that, it uh, will serve uh, us uh, plain text. And also to uh, connect to a uh, drop wizard application, one can use either browser or Postman or other uh, REST client. And uh, now we will go to testing and this is a part where drop wizard really shines it offers a rule that there you can also use the res resource <coughs> test rule with class rule annotation and this uh, spins up an in-memory jersey and allows one to test resources and here we obtain uh, the client from uh, the rule and then we can connect to it and check what's going on. And in a more elaborate scenario, uh, your resource methods can contain uh, a logic which connects to the database.
and to test such situations you can use makita which is part of uh, drop wizard testing package and uh, the nice thing is that when you add drop wizard uh, test package to the pom.xml file you don't need uh, to add explicit gunit dependency it already contains it and if you would like to take a look how to test database backed resources you can open an example application and there are several examples and now let's talk about little bit about authentication uh, drop wizard uh, offers uh, two uh, authentication methods out of box the first is basic authentication where user has to provide her credentials and the second one is OAuth2 OAuth and uh, we'll discuss how to use basic uh, authentication for drop wizard and uh, one can uh, use a database to store credentials also there is a third party module which allows to do authentication using LDAP uh, but we'll uh, do uh, will have a simpler approach and will store uh, the user credentials in the configuration file so the topic of the slide is configuration and it's uh, an excerpt from uh, config.yml file we provide two fields and we have a generated configuration class and everything uh, that we have in the configuration yaml file we have to uh, provide the same fields in our configuration file and first of all we use a not empty uh, hibernate validator annotation so if there is no login in our configuration our application won't start and the second is a JSON uh, annotation JSON property which instructs Jackson to read uh, the data from mm, the configuration file to this field and uh, finally I marked in green uh, to uh, uh, one uh, interface authenticator and a class basic credentials which are provided by drop wizard and basic credentials actually a class which is used to contain user credentials and the authenticator has single authenticate method and when we register this uh, authenticator drop wizard calls these methods for uh, those uh, resource methods that are protected with passwords and uh, uh, the thing is uh, that uh, the user, the user, which is provided as a type argument to our class, uh, in the previous version it could be each and every class such as boolean or integer, but in the la latest version uh, the user uh, class uh, should extend JavaX security principle in order for the thing to work. And the question is, who uses optionals? Okay, optional is uh, actually a container that uh, can either store a value or be empty. And it's the answer to the uh, billion dollar mistake uh, called null. And uh, <laughs> for the first time, optional was introduced to uh, Java world uh, by Google uh, Guava and previous versions of drop wizard relied on Guava versions of optional and uh, the last version of uh, drop wizard it uh, relies on Java 8 version and uh, uh, the thing is uh, that if uh, our credentials, the credentials provided by the user are not the same that are stored in our configuration file uh, so we return empty optional and drop wizard uh, provides uh, the user with the message that credentials are required and now it's the process of authenticator registration it's a little bit convoluted and uh, you should rely on documentation to repeat the thing the trick uh, but uh, please uh, take notice that uh, 
configuration parameters login and password are passed to the authenticator in the run method. And the final shot is that to uh, protect, to instruct uh, drop wizard um, to, to prompt user for credentials, uh, we add uh, a parameter to the resource method, we pass user and uh, decorate it with off annotation which is a part of drop wizard and after that if we uh, try to access uh, such method it will require to enter credentials and uh, we've already used several subsystems namely resources uh, configuration and authentication and uh, we would like to test how those parts work together and for this uh, drop wizard has another rule drop wizard up rule and uh, in this case uh, this rule spins up the whole application and the thing is that you can use either the same config file that you use in production or you can alternatively have uh, a special uh, configuration file where you instruct drop wizard to use in memory database and after that you have to obtain client and you can connect to your resources and it it's also possible to test uh, password protected resources accessible via HTTPS and the example of this in, in on the github repositories I provided previously and uh, there are two options to connect to database namely uh, Hibernate and GDBI and I, as I had previous uh, GPA experience I went with Hibernate and uh, who worked with GPA or Hibernate? Okay, a lot of people uh, so uh, when you work with Hibernate uh, you have uh, special annotations which uh, allows to uh, map your class to the tables and to map your fields to the columns and in addition there is a special jpql language i'll try to show just a moment please a special jpql language which resembles uh sql and uh, this language is used to extract uh, entities or otherwise you have data in database but this helps you to obtain to obtain the the objects populated with data with database and um, it's one way uh, to write queries uh, the queries are attached to the um, class are called name queries and the other is uh, the so-called criteria API uh, which is, is also can be used uh, along with uh, named queries to extract data from the database but uh, that uh, that's more from the realm of Hibernate and I would like to explain what drop wizard offers you when you try to connect to the database and Hibernate, uh, Drop Wizard, sorry, offers you uh, the abstract DAO class, and this class uh, have has several methods implemented. Namely, it has a method uh, to um, obtain uh, the instance of a query uh, using uh, the name of the query, and also a couple of methods to query uh, multiple results or query single results and in addition it has persist method and these methods can be used <coughs> to create and to update instances in the database and also for methods that have a query is as a parameter uh, there are ov overloaded uh, versions that allow one to use criteria API and so we have to extend uh, abstract DAO class and uh, here is example of using abstract DAO uh, class methods we created query from its name and then used the list method uh, from the parent class to uh, extract the list of employees 
from the database. And uh, as always, uh, there is a lot of boilerplate code. And to start using Hibernate, you have to provide uh, the dependency uh, in your pom.xml file and include uh, the database driver. But my advice, uh, if you work uh, with MySQL, don't include uh, the latest version of driver because it has some conflicts with liquid base. And uh, uh, the nice thing about Drop Wizard is that uh, it uses modular approach and you don't have to include um, all dependency at once. You include there only those dependencies that you need. For example, if you don't use authentication, you don't need to include it and your Fed jar will end up smaller. And uh, the, an interesting thing with a drop wizard is that it does not rely neither on persistence.xml file nor on hibernate.cfg file. And uh, it uh, uses its own configuration. So you have to create a special hibernate bundle in the application class and pass to it uh, the comma separated list of all your entities. And after that, you create uh, DEOs in the application class, pass them to the resources that uh, which uses them, and uh, uh, I think you can uh, look at examples that I provided. Uh, I tried to write a lot of code there. And uh, one more helper from Drop Wizard is a unit of work annotation. If you use Java Persistence API from managed environment from EGBs, you do not have to write a lot of boilerplate code, such as obtaining Hibernate session, starting and committing transactions. And uh, Drop Wizard, while it's a not managed environment, but it offers annotation uh, unit of work, and you do not have to work with sessions, transactions, etc. Uh, but uh, um, the caveat is the same. If you, um, your entities rely on something lazy loaded, when you leave this method, you can lazy load them. So uh, all the lazy loading should be done in this method. Also, Drop Wizard uh, offers uh, several param classes, long param, not now string param, date time param, and boolean param. And uh, all those classes are intended to check that correct that data type were passed. For example, if we pass string instead of long, it throws an exception. But you don't have um, to add any exception processing logic and Drop Wizard knows how to process uh, the exception, and namely it will produce uh, 400 bad requests to the user. And the same is true about optionals. If you mm, return an empty optional, you haven't found any employee by ID, uh, so Drop Wizard returns mm, 404, not found. And that saves a lot of time. And uh, who uses migrations? Not a lot of people. And uh, the problem is that, for example, I've published my code to GitHub. And after that, I decided that I should have mm, saved my password in encrypted form. And m my first option is to add red text uh, to README and instruct my users. Uh, you have to change, you have to encrypt password or otherwise you'll see no result. And another option is to rely on a migration framework and it's like uh, source control for databases. Uh, all uh, migration frameworks, they create special tables in, in your database where they record the current state of your database. What change sets were applied, what were not. And there are a lot of frameworks 
uh, for Java and the flyway side it has a list and and comparison of features but liquid base and flyway are most popular and uh, drop wizard includes a liquid base by default but you can use a third party module to add flyway support uh, to your application if you find it necessary and as always you have to add migration dependency do to your pom.xml file and to register the migrations bundle in the application file and we've seen previous you've seen previously that by providing arguments to uh to my fed jar i can execute my migrations but it's uh, it's uh, a little bit inconvenient for development purposes and for development one can add to maven mm, special uh uh, pl special plugin which works with migrations and you can uh, use migrations with Maven and command line or you can uh, instruct your uh, IDE to uh, execute specific uh, migration connected goals and it's more convenient for development purposes and here is a snippet uh, from mm, liquid base file uh, as I mentioned previously all the database data is contained in the fed jar and uh, liquid base have several dialects uh, first of all it allows one to write migrations in xml uh, write uh, code uh, using json yaml and sql and uh, an advantage uh, of xml in my opinion is that i can validate it against schema and don't wait uh, for application to run to spot a mistake. And if you compare it to SQL, uh, it offers a kind of um, domain specific language, which is independent of database provider. So uh, you use Hibernate, which uh, makes switching database providers easily. So it's a good idea to use uh, migration frameworks where you can by the database independent code and as i mentioned previously one can add named pieces of code so you can instruct to apply only a part of all, all file to your database and for example if you are writing tests you can predict the state of the database to create in the necessary state in order to perform your test you can add a named part for each of your tests and apply before and in, in my opinion, advantage in comparison with Flyway that migrations are identified by ID and in addition by author name. So it prevents naming collisions. Those who work with Flyway know that if several uh, developers uh, create migrations, they can name the file in the same way and then uh, negotiate who, who's first to use the name and uh, uh, the presentation is short and we have only scratched the surface but if you are interested in uh, the example projects they contain examples of testing resources using makita and uh, if you would like to find a uh, hibernate.cfg file in a drop wizard project you can check tests where uh, an in-memory database and programmatic uh, migrations uh, are used to test uh, queries. Uh, if you have uh, something like as name queries, you can have typos, and it's a good idea to run them uh, before they, you put uh, in, in them into production. Also, you can see how to uh, switch on HTTPS using configuration, uh, and uh, I created some code that uses a database to do authentication so it can be used and uh, uh, drop wizard offers a lot more and uh, in the final version and maybe in version 0 0.9 <coughs> authorization was added and uh, it uses uh, java ee annotations namely roles allowed permit all and uh, the others annotations 
Also, there is matrix library. We uh, mentioned in it only briefly when we talk about health checks, but there are about five types of various metrics, which allows you to watch your application, to see whether there are memory leaks and to analyze uh, the data or supplied by the users. Also, there is a topic of uh, dependency injection framework. And if I show you uh, my run method from the application cl uh, class, which I often mention today, you'll see that a lot of mess is there and maybe it's good idea to use dependency injection frameworks. And there are a couple of options to go. First, uh, JOSI2 includes its own uh, dependency injection framework called HK2 and you can rely on it uh, for dependency injection. Also, Google Juice is popular uh, in Drop Wizard community and there are about three uh, third-party modules uh, which you can use in your Drop Wizard application to enable Ju Juice support. Also, Drop Wizard contains uh, a couple of template and frameworks, Mustache and FreeMaker, uh, that allow you um, to create HTML representation of your resources if necessary. And also, there, there is a third-party uh, module that allows you to use uh, LDAP server for authentication purposes. And uh, the takeaway is that Drop Wizard is a production-ready framework. And if you had a Java EE background, background it's easy to start uh, to build uh, microservices using Drop Wizard. And it has great documentation and uh, some code, some useful code that makes uh, development and testing easier. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Okay, uh, actually uh, th there are a lot of systems uh, that allow one to uh, upload uh, metrics data and the one is Graphite and uh, you can um, tune uh, Drop Wizard to upload data to Graphite uh, at e and it's done with configuration and uh, it supports w once one more. Uh, product that uh, is used to uh, store matrix data and display them. Please. Uh, what's your experience so far uh, using liquid waste in production and can you uh, handle rollback? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, actually, I used uh, Flyway in production and that's why when I worked uh, to my own uh, product, I relied on liquid base because of name collisions and uh, uh, because uh, Flyway was bound to the database because you use uh, SQL to write your migrations. And uh, uh, going to, uh, to liquid base, it's definitely able to do rollbacks, uh, but uh, there are a couple of kinds of rollbacks. I'll try to show you an example. In a nutshell, there, there are uh, kinds of migrations that Liquibase can deduce. And for example, if you create a table, it can deduce that to do a rollback, uh, you, it has to drop this table. But if you add some data, you have to uh, spe specify what you should do to roll back. And for example, if you added uh, three rows, you have to uh, specify the criteria how to do a rollback. And if you wait a moment, I'll show you an example. And here I have migrations.xml file. And uh, uh, the first si change set is to create table and it can do it itself. Another create table. And uh, here I provide uh, the change set, which is insert. Uh, can you discern the text? Yeah. Okay, so I provide the insert change set. And after that, I um, provide the code, which does roll back for me. And namely, I specify to uh, delete uh, the 
the row with ID 1. And, uh, and also, uh, uh, there are specific liquid base uh, commands that allow you to do rollbacks, and moreover, you can uh, uh, instruct liquid base <coughs> to generate a SQL that uh, will do the rollback and uh, you can show the SQL to your database uh, administrator to, for approval purposes. More questions please? No questions. I bo bored everyone to death. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So we've got uh, today's, today's image is of a convenience store for system administrators who want to be someone else. <laughs> and <laughs> so just quickly, we've got a few things. We have a mailing list, a meetup, a Slack, a Google Plus group, which uh, was very quiet for a long time, but Jeff just posted a bunch <laughs> of interesting news to it in the last couple days, so still alive. Um, we've got videos. We record most of our meetings. Yeah, we have a Slack. Who's, uh, Mike can get you on that Slack, or Angelo. Angelo. Or, you. or me. Or I could get you yeah. on that Slack. Cool. Yeah. Oh. All right. So if anybody's interested in the T-Jug Slack, just uh, approach anybody. Just email the mailing list, and one of us will see it. Cool. <coughs> it's like IRC, but more profitable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a, yeah, it had two bursts of activity over the last month, or so three. Yeah. What a week out of this like half-hour chat happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes it's interesting. Uh, we've got job postings on the mailing list. As always, we heavily moderate that, so any kind of uh, you know DBA role in Atlanta will not make the cut for a Java job in Toronto. Um, so I don't know. I think there might have been one that made it through this month. Many that didn't, and you're welcome. So. <laughs> And our meetup keeps growing, so you're probably all already signed up, but that's the best place to find meeting announcements. Pretty much the only place we do meeting announcements anymore. So. going to need a bigger venue all those pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard they're all coming next month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've got some O'Reilly discounts. If you like ebooks or print books, just use that code and pay less when you order from O'Reilly. <laughs> You're always here early, Tom. There's no problem. It doesn't matter how many thousand people are coming. <laughs> you guys work for a living. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in the What's New in Java 9 heading, there's a series of articles on Vox.com that are really well written, quick to read with lots of links to more in-depth information, and some nice pictures, too. That's the picture of the new Reactive Streams API that will be available in Java 9. Um, it's really just a common interface, I think, to allow other frameworks to agree on, on a type. But it's cool that they let it in without giving it the Brian Getz five-year treatment. So we'll see. Um, there's also flow interfaces are a new thing. This is actually the first time I heard of what it is. And does anybody know? I don't know. It's a thing. I, I can read more about it in that article, and uh, some enhancements to completable futures as well. So you can check it out. It's a good article. Got some Java updates this month. The uh, CPU, which does not stand for Central Processing Unit, it's the critical patch update at Java 8 update 111. Basic auth for HTTPS tunneling is going away. I didn't even know that was a thing that the JRE supported natively, but if you want to do HTTPS tunneling with basic auth, you now have to provide a system property to re-enable it. Uh, there's a new code signing root certificate, which may affect you if you're signing jars. And they're shutting down a bunch of old, weak algorithms. So signed jars that are signed with dumb things are no longer treated as signed. These are going to be <laughs> which ones? The, uh, yeah, those were, those were deprecated probably 10 years ago or so. So now you can't. <laughs> and of course, the time zone database is always updated. That's the highlight of every release. 
Uh, yep. So also, as Java releases go, you get two at a time. They're called CPUs and PSUs, and they have nothing to do with components you put into <coughs> computers that you're building yourself. Uh, the PSU is everything in the CPU plus some extra stuff that they weren't ready to force everybody on the security baseline to update to. So this one, Blacklist, also MD5 jar signing. So which, which you would need the average wristwatch to hack. Yeah, you need a wristwatch for that one, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's going to get put into the next CPU, which is scheduled for January. So no more MD5. Clock is ticking. You pretty much just Google any MD5 straight. Do they just break it for you? Get the original text. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> it, works for, it works for every common password. It works for like, if you have an MD5 string, just put it into Google and see what comes back. That's awesome. It's usually something. It's interesting. I'm going to try that. That's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, big news recently. Was this like a today news item or something? This is pretty recent. I read about it today. Yeah. So uh, Oracle did vow to appeal the jury decision that said Google was not guilty of copyright infringement. And they have now appealed to the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, Judge Alsup, who has been overseeing this various series of trials in California, denied their request for a retrial in California, so now they're appealing to the Federal Court of Appeals. Um, the article said they're seeking up to $9 billion in damage, which I think is more than they paid for all of Sun Microsystems, <laughs> <laughs> including all their like land and buildings and hardware, hardware patents. It's worth more than all of that put together. Anything else? I'm sure other things happened. Yeah, sure. Uh, not really Java, but uh, Twitter is shutting off Vine. So if you're a heavy Vine user, no more. Uh, I think as of two months or something like that, they're just they're killing it. Uh, and Qualcomm is buying NXP. Mm. So the whole chip market just got a little bit smaller. Oh, interesting. You've all probably got an NXP chip in your pocket right now. Mm -hmm. so it's going to be a Qualcomm chip, too. Wow. All the, all the NFC stuff is by now. It's like more consolidation. Was, was that one that I posted about yeah. the JDK9? Was that sports ball? Yeah. being pushed back? Oh, yeah, we covered that last month. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. JDK9 release date has remained July, July 17th or something. 27th. <laughs> no. What's that? Interesting. Yeah. How does it? How does it know? Yeah. How does it know? That's my question. Uh, I just I just read these things. <laughs> Very interesting. Because but the big selling point of the JIT was that it would profile the code while running it before making compilation decisions. Very interesting. Maybe it just starts out a baseline and then improves it. That could be. Yeah. If it could still elect to recompile. The, the ahead of time code. Nice. Any other newses? Oh, I had one that I forgot to put in. There was an announcement just, I think, this morning on the mailing list. There's an interesting looking DevOps security conference online day thing. Oh, yeah. It was the Oracle security guy who. Yeah. He promised about three or four times in the course of the email that it was not a marketing event. <laughs> so he'll be very disappointed if it's a marketing, it's a marketing event. event. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's for real. He's, he's like, I don't, it's like that kind of stuff isn't going to happen on this conference or whatever. So he was. <laughs> there it is, there it is. Uh, what did he say? A free non-marketing DevOps worldwide virtual conference. 
that includes a security track I'm leading November 15th. It's called All Day DevOps. So you go to www.alldaydevops.com, uh, watch and listen in the comfort of your bunny slippers at home. So. Oh, uh, next week, uh, Andrew TL, or Android TL is happening. It's oh, part wow. Of, um, uh, Google's November uh, DevFest. Excellent. What's the venue for that? Uh, Mars. Mars, nice. Cool. That'll be a good one. Okay, so time to hand it over to Dimitri.